Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Bannon or Airspeed Prime. I'm the super moderator for Avatar The Last Airbender on Line.com and I'm here with the episode commentary for episode 117, The Northern Air Temple. And um, yeah, as I mentioned at the end of last video, this episode um, is the first, is the last episode of um, season 1, book 1, before we enter the uh, Northern Water Tribe. So, we get a I look at um, some of the air nomad philosophy here through the um, kind of refugees that have taken refuge in the Northern Air Temple, and um, how Ang kind of deals with them changing the Air Temple. His uh, one of the last remaining things from his people. And here we we open up with uh, you know they've obviously heard about. Um, Someone who knows uh, some stuff about the air nomads, and he wants to hear like, have they heard about any uh, of his people? Are they could any of them possibly around? So I'm obviously interested. Comes to this. And then just this thing of like airbenders laugh at gravity because they can fly with their gliders. And then Ang knows that like his people have uh, obviously are gone, and then just the kind of hope that it brings back to him when he says like they saw them last week. So Ang immediately sets off course for the Northern Air Temple, and then just, just that little bit of history there. They had the championships for um, Sky Boys and Polo, and then we just kind of wonder how did they play Sky Boys and Polo. Probably use an air ball. And then, like, from far away, they see people flying, and it, again, it gives Aang hope. But you see the kind of the smoke coming off from them. But Aang can immediately see that that they're just gliding. They're not uh, flying, they're not airbending assisted. And then we were introduced to the aspect of. Um, Airbender spirit. And there's Teo. We see that with the glider. And I instantly sees the, the Teo kind of showing off as a challenge. He's going to show them what a real airbender can do. And I'm just like fully prepared to just kind of like show them what a real airbender can do. <laughs> and then the people there kind of cheering on for uh, Teo. This is a great scene where, like, where she did kind of just kind of friendly competition. Ang really wants to show off. It shows here just just great running uh, running along the side of a wall, air scooter, back onto the glider. And Taylor's just like, okay, I can't beat that, so I'm just gonna like. Do this. And then she can kind of just like, right in the sky with uh, smoke. Uh, picture of Ang. And just the way that Aang has that same face on his on him. This is kind of disappointment of Aang of uh, he's come back to his um to see one of the temples. There's all these people here kinda of like pretending to be airbenders from his point of view. And then Teo just kinda of like freaks out. 
And it's Sokka, the, the inventor Sokka comes in. We know that we get there that Tails Dad is a designer, we you know the mechanist. And then we see the kind of how much they've changed the temple. Ang sort of like shocked at this. They are they kind of were the least technologically advanced um, of the nations. Sokka's impressed by this being an inventor and just a simple monk, not many attachments, just really concerned about the kind of uh, history being changed. And then Katara kind of singing, realizing that Aang would feel bad about this, just showing her kind of compassion. But the history of his people there he mentions. And I, I think this may co make sort of be a plot when uh, in Korra with a uh, United Republic. Maybe things have got too advanced technologically in that city. And that's kind of where all the revolt comes from. And it's just... It, This just kind of flares them up, how like they just completely wrecked a statue of kind of like one of his one of the kind of monk elders there. And uh, it's kind of interesting that like Ang did not go into the uh, avatar stage, but you can tell like oh he was pretty close to. It's kind of the reasonable uh, reaction from Aang to this. Let me get the backstory. Let me get the kind of tragedy. And you do sort of wonder, how did he stumble across a air temple, which is like up on a mountain? And then we see the that uh, Katara and Sokka are kind of moved by this story, but Aang realizes that like too much progress just kind of ruins the kind of traditions that you have, and kind of displaced from time being like he would have been like died like um, in a different era, but now he's placed in this kind of new era. And this kind of shows you the kind of technological advance that we're going to go through in 70 years in core. How like a candle with some rings and some powder in it is used as a as a uh, clock. And then they have cars and kind of, a, we presume, electricity in Korra. And then Teo realizes how concerned Aang is with this and shows them kind of one part of the temple that's in. Um, But he may want to see the only place where he, only he could get into. There's the hermit crab coming back to the acorn thing from episode 107. He knows that there is still hope for them. Like if they survive, then there's probably other sky bison that survived. There's probably other lemurs that survived, and we know that there were. Ushisaka instantly becomes kind of friendly with the mechanist because they're both are well like inventions, they're both interested in kind of science.
And here we kind of natural gas. We kind of um, it'd be interesting to know if um, this natural gas has uh, anything to do with the advancements that are going to come in Cora in United Republic. And then they're kind of talking about the danger that they lived in. And you do sort of wonder, were there any of these explosions and while the airbenders were actually living there, did they use this natural gas or anything? Obviously, the Teo does know some of the uh, philosophy behind airbending. And Anne kind of he overhears this, the spirit of airbending. And we see just how petrified Katara is, you know, she's dropping off basically a mountain. And this kind of does show um, how suited Aang and Katara are, you know, like she's not that afraid of flying. Trust in the air, let, let it carry you. And the philosophy behind the airbending of like detaching yourself from the world so your spirit can be free. You're not uh, held down to the earth by these attachments. And now he's got a guitar is trapped in the air. Like, how do I land without killing myself? You see uh, Sokka going through the uh, all the uh, kind of scrolls, all the science stuff from the mechanist. And here we have a kind of scientific kind of thing in Amazon uh, Avatar, which I'll refer to when the scene cuts back to the mechanist and Sokka. We see once again the door is like pretty much the exact same as the uh, Southern Air Temple, and you kind of wondered like. Did he just reuse the uh, same shot again for the door? And there they are, uh, Sokka and the Mechanist discover Merc Captains, giving a smell to something that does not have a smell, using rotten eggs. And then the way the mechanist has this kind of um, thing attached to the uh, a kind of air temple door, and you kind of wonder like, oh, what's he done? And we see that he has been making that the mechanist is kind of behind a lot of the kind of uh, equipment that the Fire Nation has, and it this sort of does sort of make you wonder the mechanist and United Republic. How much of an influence does he have over how things are there? And there's kind of betrayal here. Teo even doesn't know about this room. And you understand that, like, that the mechanists had no real choice. You could either just keep their home and build stuff for the Fire Nation, or kind of be forced to leave and relocate again. And here we see a familiar face, War Minister Kin or Quinn, Q U I Q I N. We saw him in the uh, flashback to when Zuko was scarred. He was beside uh, 
Zhao and Azula. Is Yang taking on his role as the Avatar? Here. Yeah. Stopping this, and it, you know, stopping any further technological advancement for the Fire Nation here. And you, like that line there from Ren is like basically a declaration of war. There's going to be a battle at the Northern Air Temple. And then, like, how air power is so kind of influential throughout the story of Avatar. You see, we know that they win this battle because of air power, but the Fire Nation discovers air power at the end of this and kind of develop it enough to. So ultimately, like, in the final battle in 321, air, air, air power is what, what completely influences um, the battle plan for Ozai. They burn the uh, Earth Kingdom from the air. You see that Sokka helped to uh, design the uh, working war balloon. And then, like. That just that little, little reference to stink bombs, you know, like slime. I just think this is probably this is pretty much our first uh, look at a big battle in the Avatar world. You know, like the Fire Nation, completely confident. They just have their way pretty much wherever they go. They're, they're struggling in the Earth Kingdom, but like, they haven't had to like really battle at an air temple since the genocide of them. So instantly, you know, the air power has the advantage. They can just like swoop in and attack them on the kind of hillside. And can I just uh, make a note immediately? The amount of uh, Fire Nation soldiers that must die in this battle is insane. Like the ones in the tanks, when the gas explosion co goes off later in the episode, the avalanche right there. That's what um, Avatar does very well. It cannot show like explicitly death, but they kind of infer death, as you know we see with Jet, Combustion Man, and so on. And we see that um, these uh, Fire Nation tanks, designed by the uh, mechanists, are the only reason that um, the Fire Nation have any like um, influence on this battle. Really, it's the mechanist designs that pretty much make the Fire Nation so powerful. Like, what can they do against these metal tanks? Like, their stink bombs aren't going to really do anything. They have to, like, knock them off the mountain. They're not going to, like, destroy them fully. And just the slime sort of thing, the stink bombs, as a... Uh, Kind of reference to Nick, and they kind of I, I don't know if they still do it, you know, the kind of orange slime thing. It's just like the interesting kind of design on the uh, all the uh, Fire Nation weapons. They're so kind of like kind of brutal, like um, the spikes all over them. There's no kind of smooth lines really on them. It's so angular. Smoke coming off them. I see how water bending kind of makes the difference in this.
air power stops the uh, the troops advancing really, and it's water bending that stops the tanks. And here comes Appa showing just how like much of an absolute beast he is. Just flips over two of those things like they're nothing. Just the sheer power of Appa. And here's the war balloon. They're giant bombs. This is their big moment. They were going to give this to the Fire Nation, but they're using it against them. And it's kind of interesting <laughs> about the Fire Nation. This is the first war balloon that we see. But like, and the Fire Nation really make no note about it. Like, they should, they really should have known that if they had a war balloon, I'm like, we don't have one of those yet. You see that the, the big slime bombs don't do anything. And then coming back to the kind of Mercaptain that I discovered earlier in the episode. Like a whole ravine full of gas and they're just gonna like blow it up. We see kind of Sokka's um, thinking in the moment perfectly. Just cuts the kind of uh, is the fuel source of the uh, war balloon straight into the ravine and just kind of like blows pretty much half the mountain up. And the amount of Fire Nation soldiers that must die in this battle here, you know, just to kind of change broken, you get oh god, there must be carnage at the, at the bottom of this hill. And there's an interesting use of uh, Sokka's boomerang, he attaches a rope to it. And Aang saves him with his airbending. We see that, you know, this like ragtag group beat a massive Fire Nation invasion force. It kind of shows like that was um, a kind of tiny uh, part of the Fire Nation and they kind of just barely won. Kind of referencing again Zhao's invasion of the Northern Water Tribe. Then they're happy, like, they have air power, Fire Nation don't. But, like, the mechanist realizes that, like, the balloon crashed, they're gonna discover it, and War Mr. Queen does. So now, the Fire Nation are gonna kinda study this and develop their own air power, as we see in the uh, giant kinda airships in the uh, finale. And before that, with, like, Azula's airship and stuff like that.